Hello and welcome to the United Stand. Manchester United have beaten Crystal Palace 2-0 in what will be a historic day for Manchester United fans. Where were you? Well, we're all too old to remember where we were when JFK got shot. But we were all there that day that Slippy G slipped and blew the title for Liverpool. But we will all remember the day where we were when Wayne Rooney ended his Manchester United career at Manchester United and Angel Gomez became Manchester United's youngest ever Premier League debutant. And that moment was fantastic and exactly what Rooney deserved and, what, and, and, and a brilliant piece of man management by Jose Mourinho. And I just want to say, I have a real man of the match, but to be honest, I think he pushed very close for player of the season, but the African nations and the injury he had sort of prevented him getting past Valencia or Herrera for player of the year. But Eric Bailly gets a massive, massive shout out today because Eric Bailly was coming off with about half an hour to go and Matty Willett was coming on and that was our last substitution. But Bailly decided to play on and that enabled us to get Gomez on, which to be honest is what football's all about. We've all got our own lives and sometimes they get a little bit mundane and everything like that. Football should be the release. Football should be the romance. And today that substitution, which some of us have predicted, I'd spoken about it on Friday night, um, but for it to actually happen in front of you is amazing. And I think everybody was fortunate enough to be at Old Trafford today and what many thought would be a, Christ, uh, a Crystal Palace dead rubber game. You saw something amazingly special. Uh, Wayne Rooney, uh, I, I choose to forget the last three, year, three years of uh, mundane football and remember the great years. Uh, and Rooney's been a fantastic servant. But Manchester United is about evolution. And when one door closes, another opens and another player comes along. And I don't want to put too much pressure on Angel Gomez, but for many, he is is the most complete talent we've produced in the youth setup in decades and hopefully he will go on to be a fantastic player for Manchester United in which case we will never forget it will go down there it'll be something that's read that he his debut coincided with Rooney's last game at Manchester United and I think hope and that's brilliant for Mourinho and I'm, I'm really pleased that Mourinho took that opportunity today because a lot of people were quite surprised Gomez just come back from injury is he ready to play first team football a lot of people were surprised that he was even training with us to get on the bench was great but for Mourinho to take the opportunity to get him on the pitch even though it was for a few minutes and have that on his CV that Angel Gomez the youngest deputant for Manchester United in the Premier League ever given it by Mourinho is fantastic. But so many other debutants today, and they deserve more of it. We've had the romance there with the Rooney and the Gomez thing, and I'll talk about Rooney in a minute. But the game itself, look, very, very easy to say, Harrop, what a goal. And it was fantastic. Released down the left by Pogba, running at a right back, who's a very experienced Premier League right back, had him on toast, stood him up, got past him, and blasted it in with his right foot. Two, showed, two buff, showed both foot talent there, Great, great goal. Very, very good performance from him. Um, and that puts us 1-0 up. Second goal, quite fortuitous, but good for Pogba. Good for Pogba to get 45 minutes. Lingard, decent run. Again, poor final ball, but a slip by that. I think it was the same right back for Crystal Palace again. He didn't have a great game. And uh, Pogba was there to take advantage of the mistake. 2-0 up. And against a strong Crystal Palace side, who, as some of you said on the watch-along, quite rightly, Crystal Palace today, if they'd won that, I think they would have moved up a couple of places. That's more money for them. So when they saw the United lineup today, I think they would have quite fancied it. And I think that played into our hands because instead of coming to Old Trafford and being a bit defensive like most teams are, they actually came and had a go. That gave us a little bit of space in the first half and um, we're tuning them up at half-time. Second half, obviously Pogba went off for Carrick. Lingard went off, worryingly, for um, Martial. And um, I worry about that because I think it's a big indication that Lingard will play in the final. I don't think Lingard's playing anywhere near well enough at the moment to be starting, but that's a discussion for another show. And Martial came on as well. So um, second half, it was very much, a I wouldn't say back to the wall, but it was very, it was. I mean, to be honest, I'll sum it up like this. It was dead men's shoes for, for Anthony Martial. It really was. He had very little of the ball to express himself. A lot of people said oh, Anthony Martial played badly in the second half. I think you need to understand football a little bit better. Um, people don't have bad games if they don't get a lot of the ball. And he had a midfield three of McTominay, Twan Seabee and Carrick. And where's the creativity from that? I thought Twan Seabee played very well. But he's not going to play the right... He's not, there was one occasion where Twan Seabee was running towards the centre circle. He could have played a 30-yard pass in front of Martial... He played a safe pass to his his um his left back, and that's not a criticism of Twan Sebi. He's he is a centre back by trade. He he may turn out to be a centre defensive midfielder, but he's certainly not a player that plays expansive football. And I think Martial had dead men's shoes. If that was an audition to play in the final, 
Um, I'm sure he would have much preferred to have had the audition that Lingard had with Paul Pogba playing in the midfield, who is an expansive player. So that summed up the second half where we didn't create very much at all. It was a lot of Palace. But to keep the clean sheet, fantastic. And I think more in the second half, people like Dimitri Mitchell at left, left back, Great going forward. He looked a bit suspect at times at the back, but he looked very good at times at the back as well. So I think he did himself uh, a lot of favours as well, as did Harrop. McTomney, out of all the young players that played today, probably I wouldn't. I would. I would not use worst because that is a really disrespectful word to use. But he probably didn't play as well as the rest. Um, and not all of these players are going to have a shout of being Manchester United players at the future. And I think McTomney, as many people who watch the youth would agree, probably won't have that, but it will have done in the world of good. And, and youth development's all about confidence, and every single young player today should feel really proud of themselves to have gone into a game like that at Old Trafford. The crowd were fantastic, wrapped them in cotton wool, encouraged them, which is what United's all about. Youth were massive on that, and they all did it fantastically well. But I want to give a shout-out as well to... Um, I mean, how to says the youth is exciting for the first time in ages. I think it is a fantastically exciting time for Manchester United, both in what we're going to do in the summer, because we do need transfer market is a massive part of it. I know people say we, we come in a buying club. Everybody's a buying club. At least Manchester United try to bring youth through. We can't do it all with youth. We've got a lot of dead wood. We're going to have to mix it up with youth and we're going to have to go in the transfer market. And they, they go hand in hand. I've got no problem with that. But it is an exciting time for the youth because when you look over the last 20 years since the class of 92, it's been slim pickings. When I look at the situation now, Fosu Menza, Twan Sibi, Rashford, Pereira, Andres Pereira, um, Gomez obviously, Chong, um, Roshan Williams, potentially even someone like Gribben could come through. You look at today, maybe maybe Mitchell, Harrop could come. You know, you get into 10 players there, 10 youth players that could, could have a future at Manchester United. That's more than the class of 92. So it's a fantastic time. And if four or five of them make it, and I really think they can, that's unprecedented since the class of 92. So it's a very exciting time for the youth. And I want to come back to Twan Sibi and Fosu Menza because if we haven't had all the injuries that we've got at the moment, and if, like people would expect, Mourinho just rested first team players and, and people like Ashley Young had been fit and he played them and, and some of the other reserves and maybe Fosu Menza and Twan Sibi had got a start, We'd all be going on about them. Oh, they're the future, they're brilliant. But today, we didn't really talk about them because we had people who'd not played before, who were younger. And Fosu Menza and Twan Sibi became instant experienced players, when in reality, they're young youth players as well. And they played like experienced players. So you've got, whilst it's right to mention Harrop and Mitchell, who, who I thought were brilliant, it's right to also mention Twan Sibi and Fosu Menza, who played like experienced pros, even though they are both very inexperienced young players as well. So they deserve a big shout out because we're not really treating them as young players now. We're treating them as first team players, but they are young youth players and they played really well. Yeah, Fosu Menza made a couple of mistakes, but he recovered with a brilliant tackle on one. I thought he was very good. And Twan Sibi playing in midfield again against an experienced Premier League side, Barely put a foot wrong. So he was fantastic as well. Um, any other players who deserve a mention? Well, you know, Phil Jones played okay. Bailey played okay, but they're not going to play in the final. Um, we've, we spoke about the fullbacks, Fosu Menza and Mitchell. I was very impressed with them. Pereira in goal didn't really have a lot to do, but commanded his box very well. That will do him the world of good. The midfield three, we've discussed them. Obviously, Carrick came on. He's not going to play in the final either. So, you know, Carrick did, did okay. Um, the front three were probably, apart from Harrop, the ones that didn't produce. Um, Rooney, uh, typical Rooney performance. Um, to be fair to him in the second half, we just, we, you know, as I said for Martial, and I'll say it for Rooney, and I'll say it for Harrop's second half performance, we gave them very little as a front three. We didn't get the ball to them. Every time we did get the ball to them, it was sort of slow ball, and they'd have three or four players around them. So to judge Rooney, Harrop, and Martial on the second half is very harsh because we didn't do enough. The first half, I didn't think, you know, Rooney put one onto the onto the top of the net from a great ball by Mitchell, but Rooney's Rooney now. I think people have come to accept that Rooney just isn't the Rooney of old and he is on the decline. And we know Harrop played well in the first half and Lingard, uh, you know, I, I, didn't, I, I just don't think Long, Lingard's playing well enough to play in the Europa League final, but I think I'll be proved wrong on that. I think he will start and hopefully he'll prove me wrong in the final. Um, but 
In relation to Wayne Rooney, it'd be wrong and remiss not to mention him. I'm convinced that that was his last performance at Old Trafford. Um, I'm convinced that Wednesday will be his last minutes if he gets on, which I'm sure he probably will at some point, in a Manchester United shirt. And I said about it last night on the Q&A, he's been a fantastic player for Manchester United. Some people call him a legend. For me, it's there's something that holds me back. Um, and, and some United fans are like that. I know we're in the minority. I'd certainly call him a United great, but there's just something that holds me back, and I don't know why that is. I think the last three years haven't been very good, but when I look at Rooney, I look at the last. I don't look at the last three years. I look at the years before that, and from the start against Fenerbahce with a hat trick to that goal against Newcastle, of which he scored two crackers against Newcastle, and people often forget the second one to the overhead kick in the derby to that season where he couldn't stop scoring, and then he got injured against Bayern Munich. Um, he's been a fantastic player for Manchester United. It's the right time. It's the right time for him to go. It's sad. Um, I look at him, I see it, his mind's willing, the body's not giving, he's not good enough for Manchester United anymore, staying any longer, he's not like Giggs and Scholes who can offer something, he just can't anymore, he needs to get out the door, clap, applaud him, fantastic, go, remember him as a great player and uh, get out now while the going's, st- well he's still got a legacy, I think another year he, he would be really tarnishing it and with some of us, he has anyway, he's not been great for three years um, but he goes with the best wishes He's been fantastic for us, and um, yeah, I, I can't say anything anything more than that. Nicholas Ander- Anderson, thanks for the contribution. He says, Andreas and Joel Pereira, Tahith Chong, Tuan Sibi, Fozu Menza, Angel Gomez, to name a few. Very exciting times ahead. I'm a very proud United fan today. And you know what? That's true, because I look at Liverpool getting top four, and I'm not happy about it. We, You can't moan about Middlesbrough. You've got to moan about us. It's our fault that Liverpool have got top four. Liverpool have not been a very good side this year. They've just got more points than us. Um, Arsenal lost about 10 games or 11 games this season and they finish above us. Our Premier League season, let's not forget, is a disgrace. An absolute disgrace and we have to hit it head on as fans, players, manager, club. That was an embarrassing season as a Premier League. We've took it on the chin. It all comes down to Wednesday. But today was nice to end the Premier League like that. End the Premier League with a real good show for everybody who was at the game about the youth, blooding a load of youngsters and being what Manchester United's about. And I know it was a dead rubber game, but it was said on the watch along. Mourinho should look at that game today, especially the first half, and see Manchester United, when we play freely and go at teams, are proper. That's the way Manchester United are. When we defend, we struggle. And we we cannot... I hope we don't do that on Wednesday. We need to play more expansively and we need to play the Manchester United way more next season. We've done it, we've done it a few times... And with it, he needs to get a few more clinical players in because actually, for all the people moan about the way we've played this season, if we'd had a couple of players who could put the ball in the back of the net, we would be comfortably in the top four. We're not there because of our own fault. We've got to take that on the chin. But Wednesday night, I love today. It's been fantastic. I love the fact that there's so many youth players who played well. It's been great. It's been a, it's taken my mind off Wednesday. It's taken my mind off the disgraceful season we've had in the Premier League, not getting top four. But now, for a minute now, it's all about it's all about Europa League. It's all about Wednesday. That's what we're building up to. So join us live tonight, half past eight, Sunday night live show, every Sunday night at half eight. We start tonight, the build up to Stockholm, the build up to Manchester United's biggest game in years. Join us live at half past eight. It starts there. Get involved because it's big time now. Our season comes down to one game. Our future comes down to one game. It is that big. We must get it right. We start tonight at half eight. Thanks everybody for watching. Please do drop a like on the video if you've enjoyed the content today. Um, can't wait for the show tonight at half eight. Really, really enjoyed the game today. My man of the match is Josh Harrop, by the way. I'll give it him because that goal was just was special for a young lad. Thanks for watching. I'll speak to you all at half past eight.